Number 5. Here we have f of t is equal to cos a t. Okay? Now, you know, we are asked to find the Laplace of this, right? And we will say the Laplace of f of t is equal to the Laplace of cos a t. Okay? Now, going with the definition of Laplace, we say that the Laplace transform of f of t is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st f of t dt. All right? So, here now, you know, our f of t is cos a t. Okay? So, that means in place of f of t, we replace it with cos a t. That means cos a t is going to give us the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cos a t dt. Okay, now for us to evaluate this, we can use several methods. But in this video, I'm going to show you two. That is number one, we can do this using Euler's formula. And secondly, you can use the first principle. Okay, now let's solve this using the Euler's formula okay now you know that in Euler e raised to the power of i x is the same as cos x plus i sine x you get this is Euler's formula and then what if we have our x to be negative that means we are going to have e raised to the power of minus i x is going to give us you know here we have negative x so here we have cos minus x, right? Plus i sine minus x. And then you see that in this cos, minus will go away, right? So we are going to have cos x minus i sine x. Okay? Now, if you say equation 1 plus equation 2, that means you say e raised to the power of i x plus e raised to the power of minus i x, which is the left-hand side of equation 1, and the left hand side of equation 2 okay is equal to when you add the right hand side of these two equations you see that here we have plus i sine x plus here we have negative i sine x so i sine x minus i sine x will give you what zero then here we have cos s plus cos x it's going to give us two cos x so here we want to make cos x the subject when you divide both sides by two that means we are going to have cos x is equal to e raised to the power of i x plus e raised to the power of minus i x all over two okay and then if you go again to equation one and equation two I say equation 1 minus equation 2. So we are going to have e raised to the power of ix minus e raised to the power of minus ix. Okay? So here, in the right hand side, we are going to have 2i sine x. Because when you say equation 1 minus equation 2, in the right hand side, cos x minus cos x will give you 0. So we are going to be left with 2i sine x. Okay? So here, making sine x the subject, that means you divide both sides by 2i. Then dividing both sides by 2i, we are going to see that sine x is equal to e raised to the power of ix minus e raised to the power of minus ix all over 2i. Alright? Good. Now, what we have in a function f of t is cos a t. So we can pick this equation 1 that we have cos x is equal to e raised to the power of i x plus e raised to the power of minus i x all over 2. Okay? But here, the function we have is, or the variable we have is a t. So in place of x, we can write a t. So doing so, we are going to say that cos a t is equal to e raised to the power of i a t plus e raised to the power of minus i a t all over 2. Hello. So in this place, we say the Laplace transform of cos a t. We're going to say that the Laplace transform of cos a t is the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus s t cos a t dt. Now, let's replace properly. Now, we have the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st 
Open bracket e raised to the power of i a t plus e raised to the power of minus i a t all over two d t. Okay, in this place now we can factor out one all over two and take it behind the integral sign. So when we do so, we're going to have one all over two integral from zero to infinity e raised to the power of minus s t open bracket e raised to the power of i a t plus e raised to the power of minus i a t close bracket d t okay now let's open the bracket use this e raised to the power of minus s t to open the bracket this is what we are going to have okay and then performing the law of indices we add their exponent so adding their exponent this is what we are going to have we are going to have 1 all over 2 integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st plus i a t okay now we say plus e raised to the power of minus st minus i a t dt is that true so now let's factor out t in the power okay in the exponent or in the power let's factor out t so when we factor out t we're going to have one all over two integral from zero to infinity e raised to the power of in bracket minus s plus i a close the bracket t plus e raised to the power of minus open bracket s plus i a close the bracket t okay dt now let's let's integrate the terms individually okay so that means we are going to integrate this way we'll have one all over two the integral from zero to infinity e raised to the power of minus s plus i a in bracket t dt plus the integral from zero to infinity e raised to the power of minus open bracket s plus i a close bracket t dt okay now we can integrate them right good now let's go we have one all over two open b bracket now, when we integrate this first term, this is what we're going to have, okay? So, the power will just come down, right? Good. Plus, the second one, the power will also come down, right? Good. That is the integral, all right? Now, let's go. We have 1 all over 2. Let's factor out or let's remove the fraction, okay? That means we factor out 1 all over minus S plus IA. Hello. We remove the fraction, right? by factoring out 1 all over minus s plus i a that is in the first one and then in the second one also we do so we factor out 1 all over minus open bracket s plus i a all right good now let's go as we factor this out now anyway we see t we plug in our upper limit minus the lower limit or the upper bound minus the lower bound okay so our upper bound we have the infinity and then the lower bound or limit is zero so now doing this now for the first one we are going to have one all over two open bracket one all over minus s plus i a open bracket e raised to the power of minus s plus i a close the bracket plug in the upper limit now we have in place of t infinity minus e raised to the power of minus s plus i a close bracket in place of t the lower limit zero plus now the other side we have one all over minus s plus i a close bracket now we have e raised to the power of minus open bracket s plus i a the upper limit that is in place of t infinity minus e raised to the power of minus open bracket s plus i a in place of t the lower limit zero all right good now if you simplify this now we're going to see that in the first one e raised to the power of infinity is going to give us what zero all right and then in the other side we have e raised to the power of zero is going to give us one so in the first one we have zero minus one and then in the second one, we also have the same 0 minus 1, okay? So, 0 minus 1 is minus 1, okay? Now, let's go. So, minus 1 multiplied by the fraction we just factored out, okay? So, it will change the sign. Here, we have 1 all over minus s plus i a. So, when you multiply this by minus 1, it's going to be 1 all over 
S minus IA. Now, in the other side, when you multiply also, it will remove the negative. Okay, so we are going to have 1 all over S plus IA. Is that clear? Now, let's go. In this case, now we have 1 all over 2 open bracket. Let's combine these two together. We look for the LCM. The LCM S minus IA multiplied by S plus IA. Okay, good. Now, when you combine these together, this is what you are going to have. So here we're going to have in the numerator S plus IA raised bracket plus S minus IA. All right. Now let's open the numerator. When you open the numerator, that is, you open the bracket. So here we're going to have plus IA minus IA is going to give us zero. And then when you say S plus S, it's going to give us two S. And then in a denominator, when you say S times S, S squared, S times IA will give us IAS. And then we have minus IA times X will give us minus IAS. And then minus IA times plus IA is going to give us minus I squared, A squared. Now, you recall that I squared is minus 1, right? So, multiply by negative here is going to give you positive. And then in this denominator, when you say IAS minus IAX is going to give you what? Zero. So in the numerator, we have 2S all over S squared plus A squared. 2, we cancel 2. We are going to be left with S all over S squared plus A squared. All right? Good. Here, we solved using Euler's formula. And we see that the Laplace transform of course, AT is giving us S all over S squared plus A squared. All right, good. Now, let's go again. We also see that A can assume any number. For instance, you can have the Laplace transform of cos 4T. So, in this place now, our A is what? It's 4. So, we have 4T. It's going to give us S all over X squared plus when you say a square, that is 4 square, is going to give us what? 16. So the Laplace transform of cos 4t is the same as s all over s squared plus 16. Okay, good. Now let's go. Let's take the second method, all right? That is using the first principle. Now, you know, we have the function f of t is equal to cos a t. All right, good. Now, we are asked to find the Laplace transform of this function f of t, okay? So, going with the definition of Laplace transform, you know, the Laplace transform of the function f of t is given as the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st f of t dt. Is that clear? So, here, our function is cos a t. So, when we say the Laplace transform of cos a t is going to give us the integral from 0 to infinity, e raised to the power of minus st cos a t dt. Do you get? Good. Now, you know, we want to use the first principle. Okay. Now, applying the first principle here, we are going to use integration by parts. I'm very sure you still recall what we mean by integration by part, right? So that is when we say the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du, okay? Now, follow me gradually. Let's go. In this place that we have the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cos at dt. We are going to split this expression into two. We call one part u. And we call the other part dv. Okay? Now, let's decide to call cos at our u. So, we can simply say let u equal to cos at. So, when we say u is equal to cos at, we differentiate this u with respect to t. That means we say du dt is equal to. When you differentiate cos at, it's going to give you minus a sine at. Alright? Good. Let's cross multiply to make du the subject, okay? So when you cross multiply, making du the subject, we're going to say that du is equal to minus a sine a t dt. Du is equal to minus a sine a t dt. Now let's go again, you know, 
after when we split these two functions into two, u and the v, right? Good, we say cos at is u. So every other thing remaining should be our what? Our dv. Then here we say let dv equal to whatever that is remaining, which is e raised to the power of minus st dt. So what we do to this is we integrate in order to find our v. Okay, so integrating both sides, we say the integral of the V is equal to the integral of E raised to the power of minus ST dt. So when you integrate, you are going to have E raised to the power of minus ST all over minus S. Alright, yes, I'm very sure you are very familiar with integration by part and then also using short tricks. Now let's go. Having gotten the values the u the v the du and the dv now you know we have the integral from zero to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cos at dt right now applying the integration by part okay where we say the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du so what do we say that our u is? Our u is cos at. So cos at which is our u multiplied by v. And then our v is e raised to the power of minus st all over s. So when you multiply these two together, it's going to give us cos at multiplied by e raised to the power of minus st all over s. Now in brackets, let's put our limit, upper limit and then our lower limit, right? Good. Minus the integral of v du what is our v our v is e raised to the power of minus st all over minus s what is our du our du is minus a sine a t dt so when you multiply this together it's going to give you minus a sine a t multiplied by e raised to the power of minus st all over minus s dt okay good now let's pick this center term this place we have cos at multiplied by e raised to the power of minus st all over minus s. Okay, let's pick it and simplify. So picking that to simplify, we have cos at multiplied by e raised to the power of minus st all over minus s. And then our limit 0 to infinity. Now plugging in the value, the upper limit minus the lower limit. Okay. First of all, let's factor out 1 all over minus x or minus 1 all over s. That is, we remove the fraction. So when you factor out minus 1 all over s, you are going to have cos at multiplied by e raised to the power of minus st. Okay, then we have our lower limit and the upper limit. Now let's plug in properly here. We are going to have minus 1 all over s, open bracket, cos in place of t. We have infinity. Infinity multiplied by e will give us infinity, right? Good. Now we have multiplied by e raised to the power of when you say minus x multiplied by infinity is going to give you minus infinity, right? Good. We have e raised to the power of minus infinity minus the lower limit. Now we have cos zero. Okay. Now we have multiplied by e raised to the power of zero. Okay, good. In this case, now we have e raised to the power of minus infinity is zero. So zero multiplied by whatsoever being the value for cos infinity is going to give you zero. Now, in the other side, we have cos zero. Cos zero is one. Okay, and then e raised to the power of zero is also what? One. One times one will give you one. So here we have zero minus one. Good, right? So here we have minus one all over x times in this place, we have 0 minus 1, which is minus 1. We have minus 1 all over s times minus 1. It's going to give us 1 all over s. The negative will go, right? Good. So this center term now has been reduced to 1 all over s. So that means we have the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cos at dt is equal to 1 all over s minus the integral from 0 to infinity minus a sine at multiplied by e raised to the power of minus st all over 
minus s dt here there is negative in a numerator and there is negative in a denominator okay so the negativity we go so and then again we factor out a all over s so if we factor out a all over s in this side we are going to have sine a t multiply by e raised to the power of minus st remaining right good that means that we have one all over s minus the integral from zero to infinity a all over s sine a t e raised to the power of minus st dt okay now let's take this a all over s behind the integral sign so going it's going to give us minus a all over s integral from 0 to infinity sine a t multiplied by e raised to the power of minus s t dt you get right good now let's go in this last part we can still simplify it okay now let's go again using integration by part i'm very sure you are familiar right again we say let u equal to sine a t we differentiate u with respect to t we have the u dt is equal to a cos a t let's cross multiply and make the u the subject we are going to have the u is equal to a cos a t dt all right good now let's go in the other side whatsoever that is remaining after when you have figured out your u should be the v so here we're going to say let the v equal to e raised to the power of minus st dt okay now integrating both sides we have the integral of dv is equal to the integral of e raised to the power of minus st dt when you integrate you are going to say that v is equal to e raised to the power of minus st all over minus s all right good now let's go we know our u we know our v we know the u we know the v right now let's bring it together apply integration by part here we have the integral from zero to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cos a t dt is equal to one all over s minus a all over s the integral from zero to infinity sine a t multiplied by e raised to the power of minus s t d t now apply integration by part properly now you know we have the integral of u dv is equal to u v minus integral of v du what is our u our u is sine a t what is our v our v is e raised to the power of minus st all over minus s when you multiply this together it's going to give us sine a t multiplied by e raised to the power of minus st all over minus s okay let's add our limit zero to infinity minus the integral what is our v e raised to the power of minus st all over minus s multiplied by du our du is a cos a t dt okay so you multiply this together it's going to give us a cos a t multiplied by e raised to the power of minus st all over minus s dt okay good now if you watch this carefully you will notice that we have minus a all over s outside right good that means this minus a all over s we open the bracket we multiply the terms inside so if we use this minus a all over s to multiply we're going to have one all over s minus a all over s open bracket inside this first bracket now we factor out minus one all over s we factor out what minus 1 all over x okay so when you factor out minus 1 all over x we have sine a t multiplied by e raised to the power of minus s t all right close the bracket plus this minus a all over s multiplying minus integral from 0 to infinity is going to give us what positive right good that means we're going to have a all over s the integral from 0 to infinity also let's factor out a all over minus x so as we factor out a all over minus s we have cos a t e raised to the power of minus s t dt okay good now let's go let's simplify this first term also this one in the middle let's simplify it also let's put the upper limit minus the lower limit now let's go in this case now you know here we have minus a all over x 
open bracket minus one all over s open bracket sign in place of t we replace the t with upper limit which is infinity so infinity times a is going to give you infinity so here we have sign infinity multiply by e raised to the power of minus infinity minus let's plug in the lower limit we have sine zero multiplied by e raised to the power of zero okay e raised to the power of minus infinity is zero so zero multiplied by whatsoever being the value of sine infinity is going to give you zero again sine zero is equal to zero okay good and then e raised to the power of zero is one so zero times one is zero so this center term is equal to zero now let's go you know we have the integral from zero to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cos at dt is equal to you know we have one all over s plus we have a all over s the integral from zero to infinity minus a all over s open bracket cos a t multiplied by e raised to the power of minus s t dt okay good now let's take this minus a all over s behind the integral sign so going is going to multiply a all over s that is there already so when it multiply it's going to give you minus a square all over s squared okay here we have one all over s minus a squared all over s squared the integral from zero to infinity cos a t multiplied by e raised to the power of minus s t dt okay good here what do we have we are going to take this minus a squared all over s squared the integral from zero to infinity cos a t multiplied by e raised to the power of s t dt to the left hand side so when we take it to the left hand side you know the sign is negative right it will turn to positive so that means we're going to have the integral from zero to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cos at dt plus a squared all over s squared the integral from zero to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cos at dt is equal to in our right hand side we're going to have one all over s remaining okay good now if you watch our left hand side carefully what do we have in common? We see that we have the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cos a t dt. This is what we have in common. So when we factor out this value or this expression from the first side, we are going to have one remaining. Factor it out in the second one, we are going to have a squared all over s squared remaining. Is that true? Good. Here we have equal to a s. Now inside this bracket, we will have 1 plus a squared all over s squared let's combine it so when we combine this together it's going to give us s squared plus a squared all over s squared is that true yes now we have integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cos at dt is equal to 1 all over s all right good now in this place now you know we are looking for the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cos at dt that is what we are looking for right but we have something attached to it okay the coefficient so that means for us to make this the subject we are going to remove the coefficient okay so for us to remove this coefficient that means we multiply both sides by the inverse of the coefficient okay by the inverse of the coefficient so what would be the inverse that is when we just turn this upside down the numerator becomes the denominator and denominator becomes the numerator that is the inverse or the reciprocal okay good so when we multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this coefficient we are going to see that the integral from zero to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cos at dt is equal to we have one all over s multiplied by s squared all over s squared plus a squared okay good now here we see that we have s squared in a numerator 
and we have s in our denominator so one of the s in our numerator we cancel one in our denominator okay so we're going to have one s in our numerator remaining okay so we have s all over s squared plus a squared so therefore we see that the integral from zero to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cos a t dt is equal to s all over s squared plus a squared and then you see that this is actually the laplace transform of cos a t so anyway you hear about the laplace transform of cos a t is the same as saying s all over s squared plus a squared all right good and then we see that a can assume any value okay for instance you can say a is equal to 4 now if you say a is equal to 4 that means you have cos 40 okay so that means if you say the laplace transform of cos 40 what is it going to give you it's going to give you s all over s squared plus 16 here we say that a is 4 here we have a squared so 4 squared is 16 so the laplace transform of course 4t is equal to s all over s squared plus 16 all right yes now let's go let's take number six